Mr. Griffith, five minutes. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Mr. McKinley touched on it. Uh, others have touched on it, Ms. Capps, in, in her questions, although she didn't say it directly. One of the big concerns here is, is that we passed a law four years ago in an attempt to make the pipeline safer. We're still trying to get those regulations implemented. They're not ready yet. And uh, there is a confidence or a lack of confidence from the public. Now, I'm going to take just a second and go to a different subject. I promise you it's relevant. <laughs> the EPA's Clean Power Plan, the final rules are not out yet. Some 13 to 16 months after that rule comes out, the states have to come up with their plan. And by 2020, they have to start implementing that plan. As a result, in part of that pressure being placed on electric generation companies, two major pipelines, I told you I'd bring it around, two major pipelines have been proposed coming through my region of the state. I represent a big chunk of one of them, and the other one affects constituents of mine even if, they don't, even if it doesn't actually come through my district. Their concern in many ways is about safety. And I've been communicating this morning with one of those constituents. Her farm is going to be affected by the Atlantic Coast Pipeline. And there are real concerns there. And, and part of the concern and the lack of confidence is the states and individuals are having to deal with the consequences of these EPA regulations faster than you can get the regulations for safety that we passed four years ago implemented. What do I say to them when they say to me, you know, in rural areas, the shutoffs are only 20 miles uh, apart. They're 20 miles apart. That's a long way on a rural road if you have to get from point A to point B. That's not following a road. What do I say to them about the safety components when you all can't even get the regs out that we thought were necessary that you get out four years ago because of previous safety problems? How do I make my constituents feel like if somebody's putting a 42-inch natural gas pipeline through their property or near their property or they're near one of the uh, compressing and pumping stations, how, do, how can they feel safe? What can you say to them? Because I will tell you that this one constituent in particular is watching. So look at the camera and tell her, how can she feel safe if her farm is now going to be di dissected or, or cut through by a pipeline? Well, PHMSA is first and foremost a safety agency, and the safety of those pipelines are what we think about 100 percent of the time. And while we are working on those 42 mandates and working on getting those regulations out, we have a lot of experience with new construction because we spend about 25 percent of our inspection time with new construction, looking at how they are implementing our regulations, how they are testing to make sure they're safe. And, and what we've done is we've actually learned a lot about new construction that we have put out through safety advisory bulletins that we've put out to the industry in different ways that um, helps to ensure that we learn a lesson. And I know you're trying, but it doesn't instill confidence when we hear about other pipeline problems in other parts of the country when we hear that pipelines that may have problems are still being used, and now they're, they're saying we, they want to bring a pipeline through our area. It causes great concern on the safety factor. Uh, what about the shutoffs in rural areas? Should they be closer together? Is that something that we should be working on in Congress? So uh, I think we talked earlier about a 2012 report that talked about auto automatic shutoff valves, and it talked about them being technically, operationally, and economically feasible, um, but not in all cases. And so um, we will be putting out proposed rules that, uh, that will capture the right stakeholder information to make sure that we put out regulations that are going to meet the safety requirements without creating unintended consequences. Well, and I appreciate that. Another question I get on a regular basis as a result of being right in the eye of the storm for uh, major uh, pipelines coming through the area is why are we cutting through new paths? Is there some safety reason why you don't want to co-locate natural gas pipelines together? Because we're cutting through a bunch of new paths not following the lines that are already there. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we as a safety agency, um, we don't have a primary lead role in the permitting and I understand and, that. My question location. is, is there a safety concern with co-location? Mm -hmm. I understand. Um, can I get back to you on the record? I, I don't know the answer to that question. I'm sorry. All right. I would greatly appreciate it because I, I probably have. I know I've got at least one watching, but I have a lot of constituents who want to know the answer to that question. Okay. With that, I see my time is up. And, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate you having this important hearing, and I yield back. This time I recognize uh, Mr. Loebsack for five minutes.